the best amongst us owe us three taxes, three types of taxes. Income tax is one. And I trust that my dear Ebo has uh, fulfilled his obligation in that respect. And somebody pointed out that he's a wealthy man, you know, and that uh, we may not all know it, but some of us know that he's a very wealthy man. The second tax is a social tax, philanthropy. And in his case, he has already demonstrated that he has fulfilled that obligation, especially with the with the uh, Yemi Ogumbi Anglican schools. Clearly, he has paid that social tax. The third is the civic tax. And this civic tax is the one that I think he has paid with the book, The Road Never Forgets. The civic tax is an obligation that those amongst us who have reached a certain level of success, who have achieved their aims on several of the objectives in life, all the rest of us, to tell their story. And from their stories, we learn. And I think that this book, The Road Never Forgets, fulfills that obligation very clearly. I'm I think that we must also, whenever I look at a book, I think that one of the things that one wants to look at is what exactly it is that the author seeks to achieve. And I think that by and large, as for anyone who has read this book or who will, you will notice that all that Dr. Ogumbi wants to achieve in this book is to tell a story, not just of himself, but of our country. And I must confess that in this book, not only does he discharge that obligation, he has also shown that he is one who is capable of telling a story without embellishment. And anyone who has read the book, and I've had a good opportunity to read it, although I haven't read it all, I have covered quite some ground in it, will agree that not only does the road never forget, not only is it true that the road never forgets, but you will also remember that the elephant that walked that road has a phenomenal memory. The elephant, as you know, forgets nothing. Its brain, we are told, is five kilograms in weight. So the elephant in this room, if you'll pardon the pun, Dr. Ogumbi, surely forgets little. He speaks of such a wide spectrum of issues, from his childhood and youth through to events that happened just last year, with the same mind-boggling freshness of memory. I think that Dr. Ogumbi's story is at once a life story of a truly remarkable indivi individual, and at the same time the story of a country. And who better to tell the story of Nigeria and the magical possibilities of our ethnic blending than one born in Kano of a Yoruba father and an Igbo mother, and whose first language was Hausa. The subtext of this fascinating life story is the account of a man and his country, both struggling to define themselves. From his idyllic childhood in Sabangari, and you need to read the stories of his childhood in Sabangari, Kano. He witnessed the first ethnic riots, the 1953 Kano riots. How does a young boy with his own ethnic mix even begin to understand the strong parochial hatreds that developed overnight and led to the killing of those of other tribes, many of whom had lived together once as siblings? The young nation lost its innocence just as a six-year-old Yemi Ogumbi lost his. But he would become the brilliant university teacher, newspaper executive, debonair, connoisseur of wines, collector of fine arts, equally at home with modern and traditional settings. By the way, on the matter of fine wines, I must not forget to tell you 
to read the hilarious account of his initiation into wine drinking by none other than his illustrious teacher and friend, Professor Walesho Nkama. And I think that the story really makes for interesting reading. He would also overcome his initial hesitations and take the titles of Balogu of the Pararemo and Omoloku at Dimula of Ife. In this contemporary history of Nigeria, it turns out by some quirk of circumstance that the author is present at several critical events that occurred in our country. He had a ringside seat during the wet year period in the old western region by virtue of the fact that Ibadan Boys House High School was located behind the Chief of Bafemi Aolawa's home in Ibadan. His first open day at King's College was the day of the first coup in Nigeria. And he was right there when Adekule Adekweju was fatally shot at UI. So in telling this compelling story, we are led through the nationalistic idealism of our pre-colonial days, the excitement of civil rule and its tragic denouement, then military rule, a curious diarchy, other iterations of civil rule, and all manner of contemporary events. But he engages every subject honestly, openly, and frankly. Somehow, it almost seems that by his open, vulnerable style, he disarms and commands empathy and admiration. And perhaps there is counsel there for us as a nation. Perhaps we need to talk more to ourselves and not at ourselves. We need frank discussions on the issues that divide us. And we need openness about our fears and prejudices. Perhaps that way we may gain each other's confidence. I think that Dr. Ogumbi's powerful storytelling is made more so by his uniquely unashamed style. Maybe age helps. It might help in telling one story. So you can tell that he's not anxious to justify his actions or make himself the hero of every experience. And you can tell that he's just open and frank about everything. He dedicates this book to his wife, Auntie Shade in the following unforgettable words, and I must read it to you. Dedicated deservedly to my much-loved wife, Ola Shade, for her unbridled love, her steadfastness, tolerance, forbearance, and unwavering commitment for the past 53 years, even in spite of myself. End of quote. And you need to read, and you need to read the book to find out what a gem she has been and how her forbearance has made even the story tellable. Egbon, now that you are 75, there are interesting biblical allusions that I will direct your attention to. When God called him and gave him the task of birthing a new nation. Maybe there is a message there for you too. Perhaps uh, your exertions have only just begun. Everyone has said that you are not just a man of charisma, but you are a force of nature, an elemental force all by yourself. Perhaps you can make a few things happen now that you are 75. And we all look forward to that. I thank you very much for your care and wise counsel and your guidance at all times. And we, your gurus, are extremely proud of you and how through the years you've been consistent in your kindness in your generosity and commitment to a better nation. Happy birthday. As your days, so shall your strength, so shall your wisdom, and so shall your favor with the Almighty God. God bless you.